The Restless Cloud by Nathan Pemberton, Johann Schleier Smith, and Joey Gonzalez. Hello. Today we're going to be talking about the POSIX for the cloud. Come along. We will begin by exploring some of the ways that existing interfaces are not quite appropriate for the cloud. Next, we'll describe a new interface that we think is more appropriate. Finally, we'll go over a few of the opportunities and challenges in implementing such an interface, and we'll conclude with a number of exciting open questions. What the cloud isn't. The internet. The cloud isn't the internet. It's not a loose collection of servers and clients speaking through this vague, amorphous network. We know something about what's going on, and we have control over things like data placement and scheduling. It's also not a very static place. We don't have a data center full of servers. We don't have clients each running their own independent machines. We're auto-scaling and trying to get pay-per-use. Protocols designed for this environment, like REST, why they decouple too much and make too few assumptions about what we can and can't control. This really hamstrings our ability to optimize in the cloud. A single computer. The cloud isn't a single machine. It's not a tightly coupled set of resources communicating through some high performance on chip interconnect. Why there's a real network with real latency and bandwidth considerations to get in the way. It's also not a very coherent or single machine. On my laptop or server, people don't go mucking about with the operating system or hardware, well, at least not very often. Not true in the cloud. New services and new hardware platforms are introduced every day. So interfaces like a distributed operating system that come from this single machine perspective, why they couple too much, and they make too many assumptions about our ability to synchronize or communicate. This limits our ability to add new services and features, or distribute user applications across multiple machines. Serverless. What about serverless? Why, serverless is a great abstraction. It gives us wonderful auto-scaling properties and gets us darn close to paper use. But serverless is more of a design philosophy than a unified set of interfaces. It's not entirely clear how different serverless offerings can relate to each other. Security properties, data movement, it lacks a unifying abstraction. A POSIX for the cloud. But what is a POSIX? Well, POSIX is an abstraction, a metaphor if you will. It's what users think a computer is. Users think computers are processes and file systems. Well, of course they're not. Computers are chips and electrons floating around through wires. But that metaphor is close enough to reality that users and programmers typically do about the right thing. POSIX is also not an implementation. Why, there's many operating systems, all of which implement POSIX, but they do it slightly differently. Maybe they even have slightly different features, but they're all close enough that it's simple to port code between them. Well, simple enough anyways. What we need is a similar abstraction for the cloud. Now, I don't think it's POSIX for a lot of the reasons we discussed while learning about distributed operating systems, but there's got to be something. A portable cloud system interface. Let's call that something the portable cloud system interface, or PCSI. Maybe not quite the same ring as POSIX, but it gets the idea across. Now how we think this ought to work starts with serverless. It has many of the properties we want, auto-scaling, pay-per-use, freedom from DevOps concerns, but we're gonna nudge it towards a little more of a general purpose interface. In PCSI, we're gonna borrow the idea of file systems from POSIX, along with its everything is a file philosophy. Some of our objects will be bags of bits, as you might expect, while others will be things like FIFOs or network sockets or some other thing you've never thought of. Regardless of their implementation, these objects will all be accessed through a common read-write interface. Now, one way we're gonna diverge from POSIX is in the naming scheme. Naming is a highly synchronous activity, and we'd prefer not to have it on our critical path. 
Hence, we will separate naming and access. Naming will be optional, while all accesses will go through the concept of a reference. Some references are named, other references may be anonymous. Regardless, references are where we manage things like session state and capabilities. Another big difference is going to come through the consistency models. In a local machine, highly consistent protocols are acceptable. In the cloud, this is not so true. In PCSI, we will support multiple mutability levels and multiple consistency policies. On the compute side, we're going to start with a graph of function invocations, similar to how you would do FAST today. But to broaden the scope, we're going to allow for heterogeneous function implementations. Sure, you'll still have your CPU type function, but you might also have GPU or FPGA type functions. Perhaps we'll go even further afield and enable SQL services. Regardless of their implementation, all of these functions will look very similar. They have their inputs, their outputs, and they communicate explicitly through a data layer. This heterogeneity is what's going to enable us to broaden the scope and innovate going forward. Some practical consideration. It's not enough for a system interface to just make sense to users. It's got to be practical to implement as well. After all, we got to build the darn thing. To understand some of the practical considerations around a system like ours, it's important to recognize the difference between logical and physical disaggregation. PCSI is logically disaggregated because functions talk to each other explicitly, and state is clearly separated out. But just because they're logically disaggregated doesn't mean they have to be physically disaggregated. We can take that graph we saw before, and we could instantiate it on just a few servers. Perhaps we want to group the CPU and GPU type functions together and allow any data transfers to go through PCIe, just a, a CUDA mem copy. Perhaps we want to take our FPGA and just slap that right in front of our SQL service. In that case, it acts kind of like Microsoft's Catapult, a bump in the wire accelerator. We could also take that same graph and instantiate it on multiple different servers. In this case, perhaps we want to save some cost by harvesting an idle resource for our CPU. Or maybe we want to build custom GPU blades with their own network topologies or even thermal design considerations. The important thing is that logical disaggregation allows us to optimize for different targets and gives us flexibility without painting ourselves into a corner. That being said, there are still going to be limitations to the performance that we can achieve. Some applications, like transactional databases or supercomputing sorts of things, well, they just need a tight coupling of state and compute. To get around this, we're going to need an escape hatch, a form of kernel bypass, if you will. We can take a subgraph of our application and instantiate it on a static set of resources. Now, you're going to pay for these resources and lose a lot of the serverless benefits, but you're going to get the performance that you wanted. The important thing to recognize is that even with this kernel bypass, we haven't violated our system interface. That mega function, why it looks just like any other function. It took inputs, produced outputs, and interacted with the data layer. Conclusion. As we've seen, a good system interface aligns user expectations with the realities of their underlying system, and it frees system implementers to be creative and innovate. POSIX brought that sanity to the single node environment, and by golly, it's time for the cloud to get one too. We think serverless provides a wonderful starting point, and we've presented a few ways that it could be generalized. However, there are still many open questions around consistency, adoption, and how far we can push that generality. And boy, are we excited to talk to you about them soon.